Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about feedback inhibition. This is an important process in the cell that has a lot of regulatory repercussions. So first let's talk about what feedback inhibition is. It is a situation in which you have some kind of metabolic pathway where you have an initial substrate, multiple enzymes that act on multiple intermediates to reach an end product. So feedback inhibition is when the final product, that end product, when that final product actually inhibits the pathway upstream. That would be if this end product was actually capable of inhibiting enzyme one, the first enzyme that acts on the initial substrate. Now what's the point of this? Why would the cell have metabolic pathways where the end product basically turns the entire pathway off and keeps it from producing more end product? Well, it has to do with waste. Feedback inhibition prevents a cell from wasting things. specifically from wasting energy and material resources. That is, from wasting energy producing these enzymes and having these enzymes act on these different intermediates and preventing the waste of material resources means preventing the waste of things like the amino acids that are used to make these enzymes uh, things like the precursors that are made to work on these intermediates, etc. And so the reason that the, that the feedback inhibition prevents a cell from wasting these things is because at a certain point, the end product is no longer needed. That means that this metabolic pathway will run and run and run and make lots of the end product and at some point, the end product will no longer be needed by the cell anymore. And since it's not needed, it won't be used by the cell. This means that the end product, its concentration in the cell will increase, and that is what allows it to inhibit that first enzyme to keep even more unnecessary end product from being made. An example of this is when high ATP concentrations inhibit an enzyme required in glycolysis. Remember that in cellular respiration, there are three main steps. There's glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, which is what powers oxidative phosphorylation with ATP synthase. If you want to refresh yourself on some of those details, please see my video on cellular respiration. But basically, those different stages all produce some ATP. And so when the cell needs ATP, it wants cellular respiration to run and produce what it needs. However, when the cell no longer needs ATP, or when the ATP being produced reaches too high of a concentration in the cell, that ATP will actually inhibit an enzyme that is required in the first stages of cellular respiration. Again, preventing the cell from wasting energy and material resources running that complex cellular respiration product. So that is it for today at Biology Professor. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a lot.